Welcome to Behavior Driven Integration with Cucumber and Citrus. My name is Christoph and I'm from Germany. I work, th work there for a company called uh, Console Software and I'm really happy to be here and to be part of DevOps US. So in the next 30 minutes we will have a look at two frameworks, um, Cucumber and Citrus, where Cucumber covers the behavior driven aspects and uh, Citrus is an integration testing framework for your messaging interfaces. So we will have a small sample application that uses HTTP REST and uh, JMS and mail communication. And we will combine these two frameworks in order to have automated integration tests with uh, behavior-driven aspects. So uh, behavior-driven development, um, a short raise of hands, who has been working with BDD before? Yeah like three people, yeah. So um, it's about communication in your team and in your company. So let's say you have a group of people in your company or in your team that are in charge of creating new features, thinking of new ways to create new business value. And these people know the processes and the user experiences very well. They are domain experts and they are product owners and they have new ideas uh, how to create new business value and how to create new features, what is uh, the next way to create new user experiences, products, and so on. And not necessarily these people know how to write software, and this is good for us so software developers, so we can have a job and we can write some code for them. And uh, these two groups, yeah, they have to exchange some knowledge. So, um, the product owners, they have to describe what is the next feature all about, what is the income, what is the outcome, what exactly um, is the uh, aim that we want to achieve with this new feature. And we software developers have to communicate how we can integrate these new features in existing applications. Do we have to write new components? Do we have to write new services and so on? And um, another aspect is we, as a software development, we have to prove that we have made that feature as it was expected or as it was required. And this uh, communication or this uh, knowledge, knowledge exchange can go deeply wrong um, at the very beginning of software development. So when you have bad communication, when you have unclear requirements or misunderstandings, not even a single line of code has been written yet, but things can go deeply wrong. And behavior-driven development tries to give us some uh, concepts and some tooling to improve that. So it's all about explaining the behavior of uh, software. And when you think of uh, how do you explain your ideas and your thoughts to another person, a, a good idea is to give concrete examples. So if you really have a concrete example, you talk to the other person and you Ex explain your ideas by having a concrete example. And this is where Gherkin comes in, in behavior-driven development. So Gherkin is a specification language. It uses some keywords for describing features in form of user stories. And these user stories have scenarios, and these scenarios describe very concrete examples. Um, and this is a very good way to write down your features and to write down everything that you need. So the keywords are uh, given a certain context, when some event happens, then an outcome should occur. And this given when then structure and this given when then syntax has been proven to be very good to write down your feature and to give a concrete example to the other person that should understand what you want to, want to say. So let's uh, have a small um, application. I have prepared a small Spring Boot application. It's a voting application, so users can go there and uh, create new votings, give it a title, give it some vote options, and then other users can go there, open a voting, do some votes, and when we close a voting, then we should see re the, the results of, of the voting. So a feature specification for this small application written in Gherkin could look like this. So for creating a voting, as a user, I want to create new votings, and each voting is given default vote options. And then I use a very concrete example to describe the scenario. So I 
uh, pick a voting title, do you like Mondays? When I create the new voting, then the voting should have two options, the default options, yes and no. And of course, a complete feature is described by multiple scenarios, so I can add another scenario for adding some custom vote options. And in this scenario, I um, pick the options green, red, and blue, and then, of course, um, the outcome should be that we have the vote options green, red, and blue. And Cucumber, as a framework, can read these specification files and make them directly executable as uh, unit tests. And let's have a look at this. So um, JUnit offers the way to uh, yeah, ex um, execute the tests with a test runner, and Cucumber is providing such a test runner so we can use the JUnit run with annotation and give it the Cucumber uh, test runner, and now Cucumber is running our JUnit test. And Cucumber will read all feature files in that very same package as this class and make them executable as unit tests. And we have to provide some kind of mapping, or it's called glue code, so that the feature file and the executable unit testing method is matched. And these are called uh, step definitions, and we will have a closer look at them right now. So when I have this line, when I create new voting and the title, then I should have a method which is annotated with some cucumber annotation, and we have cucumber annotations for given when then. And this annotation is provided with a um, regular expression. And this regular expression should match my line in the feature specification. So I have this regular expression, I create new voting, and as you can see, I can have a regular expression capturing groups in order to have the title of the voting injected as a method argument. So the title is um, injected here as method argument, and then I can use it uh, in order to create a voting ID, create the voting with a title, and call the voting service uh, to add this new voting. So this is normal unit testing code then. Also the second um, example here, then voting should have three options. Again, I pass in the amount of options as a regular expression capturing group. Um, it's the option count, and then I can do a normal unit testing assertion on the, on the voting service. So this is the basic, basic idea. Um, Cucumber gives us some syntactical sugar here, so we can also provide a data table, and this data table is passed in automatically as a data table object, and then I can have some operations on this data table object, like here, um, checking the size of the options and checking for each uh, given line in this data table that the option is available on this, on this voting. So this is another way of describing um, the, the data that is injected into the, into the method. And one other thing, um, you can have optional capturing groups like the leading the, it's optional, it's just a more flexible way to create your regular expressions. So in the feature specification, you can write then the voting should have options or you can write then voting should have options. It's just uh, syntact syntactical sugar here. So let's have a look at this in a small uh, demo. Um, I have this voting application here, as I already said. It's a Spring Boot web application. Maybe I can show you this in, as a running um, application. I have uh, started this uh, Spring Boot locally on my machine. So I can start this application. I can add votings here. Do you like Java? We can open that and of course yeah, we, we vote for yes to like Java. Yeah, okay. And uh, if we close the voting, then no further voting options um, are accepted. A very small application just for demonstrating that. And this uh, Spring Boot web application, of course, it has some uh, controllers here for the REST API, some very basic services with in-memory storage of the votings that we created model classes and yeah, not, nothing fancy here. And in the tests, of course, we have this uh, cucumber test, we have our voting um, step definitions with all the methods that are annotated with cucumber annotations that uh, match the regular expressions. And then, of course, we have the um, feature files and these are then written in Gherkin 
describing the feature, having scenarios with concrete examples. And here, for example, these are the voting results. If we do some votes, then the results should be calculated right. And we can have a top vote, yeah, like the most um, clicked um, option here. And all that stuff is executable as a unit test. So as it's a normal J unit test, I can run this from my Java um, IDE. And yeah, it's blazing fast as a unit test should be. And we can see that the integration of Cucumber into a Java IDE like IntelliJ is very, very good. So you can browse your scenarios, you can browse everything. I hope you can see that. And also, um, Speaking of the integration into a Java IDE, it's, it's really awesome. You have the syntax highlighting here, and uh, you have the highlighting of the capturing groups that are passed in as method arguments, and you can also jump into the methods here. So we can jump into the implementing method that matches the regular expression here. So this integration into your Java IDE is really, really great. So that's for the first short demo here. Let's move on. What else do we have? We have uh, hooks, which is a simple way of executing tasks before a scenario and after scenario. Very simple. We have background steps. So the background steps are valid for the whole feature file. And each scenario is built upon these background steps. So these background steps are executed before each scenario is executed. And these are normal. Um, steps with the annotations then in the step definition classes with the regular expressions is just the same. Scenario outline is uh, also very interesting. Uh, this is a great way for providing test data. We can use placeholders here like uh, the brackets title, yes votes, no votes, and top vote. And we can give at the very bottom, we can give a, a data table of example data and for each line in this data table, um, Cucumber will execute the scenario and will just provide this test data to the, to the scenario. That is the short introduction to Cucumber. I cannot mention everything about behavior-driven development and Cucumber itself. Please go there and have a look at it. It provides a lot of other features. It's just a short introduction because we have uh, limited time here. So let's combine this now with uh, Citrus, the second framework. So Citrus is a integration framework for your messaging interfaces. And yeah, what well, does that mean? So software nowadays um, calls or exchanges data with other software components using REST APIs, using JMS, using file-based interfaces. Uh, so web services, of course, they are still there, out there. So all these messaging interfaces should be tested in an integration test. And if we have um, the voting application here as an example, so clients call the voting app over the REST API or as an alternative over the JMS API. And on the other side, the voting app, when a voting is closed and um, all votings are done, a reporting uh, server backend should receive some uh, reporting over JMS and we should send out some email to the participants that the voting is now closed and the results are and this and that. So we have, in this example, we have three different interfaces from client side, from server side, from backend server side. And we would test or we should test that in an integration test. And Citrus as a framework is able to simulate all the surrounding uh, components um, like sending in some client requests over REST, over JMS, and on the other side, receiving JMS messages as the reporting backend and as the mail server receiving mail content. So on the client side and on the server side, Citrus provides us ready-to-use components to simulate these components in, a, in an integration test. So if you combine Citrus with Cucumber, you have to do one thing. You have to set a Citrus object factory and this is done in the Cucumber properties or over system properties. And this enables Citrus to extend Cucumber with some extensions. And we will have a look at these extensions right now. But still, the test is run with a normal Cucumber test runner. So it's a, just a normal JUnit test run with the Cucumber runner. So all the feature files are um, read and executed as before. 
and we can have some optional cucumber options for adding a, a special citrus reporter for having citrus reports, but this is optional. And then in a, yeah, in a new feature, we describe, we use the domain-specific language of this voting app, like uh, having a new voting, giving it a title, giving it vote options. So this is still a uh, uh, feature specification with the normal um, domain-specific language, but in the background, we are using Citrus now to send out some HTTP calls, to send out some JMS calls, to receive JMS calls, or at the very bottom, at the line, uh, then participants should receive an email. This is the mail content that should be received over, over the Citrus components. So in our step classes, as we uh, have this Citrus extension enabled, we can use new annotations like the Citrus endpoint annotation, and this will automatically inject me some, some endpoints. And we will have a look at this in, uh, on the next slide. And Using these endpoints, I can send out some REST call. I can receive some JMS message. I can send out some JMS message. I can receive mail content with a mail server. So these are the ready-to-use components provided by, by Citrus. And we can have the test runner. This is our entrance to the Java Fluent API provided by Citrus that is able to um, yeah, um, support you by writing the uh, REST calls or the JMS calls. So the runner is um, the entry to the Java Fluent API and we can use a client component to send out some uh, delete method here to the, to the server. And we receive, in the next uh, action, we receive the response from the server and we check that the response is HTTP status okay. So speaking of the endpoints, as I said, Citrus provides ready-to-use endpoints for different message interfaces on the client and on the server side. Here in our example, we have a Spring Bean um, uh, configuration, a, a Java Spring Bean configuration, where we create the Citrus endpoints. Here's a, an HTTP client, of course, gets a uh, server URL to call, and we have a mail server component, and these uh, few lines create a complete mail server which automatically starts when the test starts and is able to receive mail content. So it's pretty easy to, to add this endpoint configuration. And as I said, Citrus provides several components on client and server side for different messaging interfaces like SOAP web services or JMS. We will see that uh, later on. Also Camel integration, Selenium integration, we will see that in the demo and so on. So having a closer look at the uh, runner API, so as I said, we can uh, use the runner API to send, up, send out some HTTP calls. As you can see, we can define payloads here, which is XML or JSON or plain text, whatever. And we can use variables in the, in the payloads. So at the very beginning, I create some variables here. Um, this is for the Citrus uh, runner and I can reference these variables in payloads with the dollar curly bracket um, expression syntax. As you can see here in the JSON payload, I reference these variables. This is a great way of creating some state at the very beginning of the test, and then at the further steps that are executed, I can reference uh, the voting ID, for example, to send out um, and, and, and reference all the same voting ID in the, in the whole scenario. And again, we receive some uh, server response and check that the HTTP status is okay. For the mail server communication here, so we, again, we use the runner fluent API to receive a message. Now we reference the mail server and the mail server automatically converts incoming mail content to an XML representation. And why is, is that done? This is done because Citrus has very powerful validators for XML, for JSON, or for plain text. And now when the mail content is coming in, we can just provide here an expected mail content. And this expected mail content is given here in XML. It's loaded from a class path resource. And then Citrus will just check that the mail content that is actually received is compared to the um, expected mail content. So we want to have the test as, um, aspects 
that we check that the incoming email is as expected. And again, we can use variable content like the mail body. This is coming from the, um, from the feature specification and this mail body is set as a variable and then we can uh, reference this in the expected mail content. So again, Citrus is really, really powerful in comparing XML data, in comparing JSON data. We can ignore some sub-elements. We can have dynamic test uh, data here, um, functions, uh, validation matches, all that stuff. But uh, I can really not uh, explain all of that right now. But the, the impression should be, should be there. And last not least, the JMS communication. So um, again, we create some JMS endpoint. This is asynchronous JMS endpoint. We give it a connection factory um, that we need in, in JMS. We give it a destination name, which is a queue name or a topic name. And then we are ready to send out and receive messages uh, over this destination. And again, we use the runner API, use a runner.receive, reference the uh, reporting endpoint here. And in this case, we expect a JSON payload. And this JSON payload, again, is then compared element for element. And in this JSON validator, we have uh, several options here for ignoring some sub-elements or for having different orders of that, because in, in JSON, the order of the different elements is not, is not, val um, yeah, is not, uh, is not uh, valid anymore. So let's have a demo for this. Lots of stuff, and maybe we can show that in a, in a small demo. So let me close the implementation. I have provided uh, different modules for different aspects, and uh, again, uh, this whole demo is available at GitHub. I will have uh, a slide at the, the last slide, so you can go there, you can clone the whole demo and execute everything on your, on your local machine. So let's have a, a call here at the REST API test. Um, it's a normal JUnit test, and we have uh, all these step definitions. And let's have a look at the feature specifications. And again, we are using this uh, domain-specific language and translate all that into step definitions. And now these step definitions use the runner to execute some uh, messaging interfaces. Let's run the test to see it running. And now, yeah, the Cucumber still reads this uh, feature files, translates it to the um, annotated methods here. And in the background, we just call the application that is running on my local machine over REST, over JMS, and the mail content is also checked here. So hopefully this test is green. Ah, very good. So all the tests have uh, run through. So maybe we have a failing test. So let's expect a top vote here for yes, although also, uh, we have here um, the no count. So this test should be failing right now because our expectation is wrong. Okay, test failed. And here you can see that uh, in the JSON validation, the element uh, name here uh, was expected to be um, yes, but it was actually no. So the JSON data that we received from the server is not as, as expected here. And this is all driven by the feature specification. So lo let's uh, fix that again. So another aspect is uh, we have to write these glue code in the background. So this runner with doing the HTTP calls, doing the JMS calls and so on, we have to write this um, every time from scratch. And I thought to myself, maybe we can have some default step definitions that are provided within Citrus so you can use that right away. And um, I did that. So here in the Cucumber options, we can load this predefined step definitions that are coming from Citrus for different interfaces like for HTTP here. And then we can have a feature scenario where we can write uh, when send delete on slash voting, then receive status 200 okay. And 
when we use this syntax, we don't have to write any glue code on our own. So if I jump here right into that, we see on the, on the left-hand side here that this is coming from the Citrus Cucumber jar file. So this is provided by Citrus. We can use this uh, predefined step definition right away. We can start right to, to have this feature. Um, the syntax here is given a payload and content type is application JSON when sent post on slash voting, then receive status 200 OK. It's a little bit more technical. We don't have this uh, complete domain-specific language anymore, but um, it's, a, it's a great way of writing um, yeah, technical unit tests or technical integration tests, behavior-driven for re calling REST APIs. And the good thing is you can mix all those. So um, still I'm able to go in here and say um, given voting list is empty or vo closes the voting. So I'm still able to reference custom glue code with predefined glue code. It's just a matter of regular expressions that match in the custom uh, step definitions or in the provided step definitions. So we are really, really um, powerful here in mixing, mixing those to create our own domain-specific language, how to describe the feature files and the feature scenarios. Let me show you this um, with Selenium once more. So the same approach, I go here and I add the predefined Selenium steps from Citrus, and then I'm able to write feature specifications that use um, lines like when user starts browser and user navigates to uh, an URL, then the page should validate, or when we execute uh, some um, submit with arguments and we sleep, sleep is another um, default step definition coming from Citrus, and then the page should display an element with a link text. So you see this is Selenium style where we check elements on the page and if we execute this test right now, then hopefully um, a browser should open and the voting application is then just tested from a UI perspective. So Selenium will then click buttons, fill in form fields, navigate through the pages, and all this stuff is uh, using the Citrus Selenium integration with the Cucumber integration in combination. Good, so let's go back here. We can see that all the tests are, are green. So my time is slowly running out. Maybe let's have a quick look at the JMS stuff. So um, the scenario here is using the scenario outline feature. This proves that we still are able to use the Cucumber features with Citrus here. So in the background, um, we have like here the runners calling HTTP and here, for example, receiving reportings over JMS. And if we execute that, we just don't send in the data over HTTP, we send it in over JMS, we receive JMS data as a reporting server. And this proves that we can have all our integration and all our messaging uh, interfaces tested with one tool, with, with Citrus, no matter if it's HTTP or if it's JMS, file-based or whatever you, whatever you can think of. And we can still have these Cucumber aspects for behavior-driven development combined with this uh, sort of um, integration testing. So if that is uh, green, then I can go back to the slides for showing you the last slide. Yeah. So everything is running fine. Let's go back and let's show you the, the promised slide for the reading information. I hope you got the impression of both tools, Cucumber for executing behavior-driven tests, Citrus for executing the integration tests for calling REST and API um, over different interfaces. The demo is available on uh, GitHub. So if you go there, clone the demo, run it on your local machine, and uh, I'm happy to receive some questions in the last, maybe one question if there is one question. Yeah? Yeah. 
So the, the question was, um, when using behavior driven, we have a certain buy-in for the, for the client to receive or to provide this information of writing the files, writing the features and so on. And if this is um, yeah, practical in, in, in use. So behavior driven aspects or behavior driven development is part uh, to, to have this communication with the client. So um, if you go to the Cucumber site, you will have, uh, or you, we will learn how you can have meetings where you have all participants included, where you can just um, have these feature files at the end of the meeting, you can you write the feature files or you should have these feature files. And this has a certain communication with the client and you can think of everything and uh, you maybe think of aspects that you alone wouldn't have thought of. So this communication with the client is a big, a big uh, step in, in having this behavior driven uh, aspects here in, in this behavior driven um, concepts. So it is, it is tough, of course, because um, you have to have uh, the clients to work with you. Yeah? But at the end, you will have a feature specification that is understood by both sides. You will have a common understanding of what the feature should look like, what is in scope, what is out of scope, what's the income, what's the outcome. So this is then what, what, you, what you receive. Further questions? Yeah. Um, yeah, there is a module. Uh, the, the question was, do you have any integration with persistence testing? Um, Citrus is able to connect to uh, storage and to um, have a look into the storage if there's an entry for a customer with this and that state. So you will have like actions that uh, go to the, to the storage and you can integrate that uh, with the test runner API. So if you have further questions, maybe come to the desk or open some, some issues on that GitHub sample um, repository so we can have a discussion there also. And I thank you very much for your time and your... Thank you.